माननीय मुख्यमंत्री जी हमारे वाइस चांसलर जी रजिस्ट्रार जी यहाँ मौजूद विद्वजन मेरे नौजवान दोस्तों बहनों और भाई मुझे आज ये गौरव है भारत के बहुत जाने माने भारतीय विद्याओं के विशेषज्ञ और संस्कृत के महान विद्वान भारत की आश्रम की धरती के बेटे प्रोफेसर कृष्णकांत हैंडिक जी के एक सौ सातवें जन्मदिन पर मैं यहाँ मौजूद मैंने उनकी जिंदगी के बारे में पहले थोड़ा बहुत सुना था लेकिन जब मुझे आमंत्रण मिला तो मैंने उनके बारे में पढ़ा बहुत सारी चीजें उनके जीवन से हम लोग सब सीख सकते हैं लेकिन जो सबसे बड़ी बात मेरे दिल को छुई शायद थोड़ा बहुत मेरी जिंदगी का तौर तरीका भी वैसा रहा इसलिए शायद छुई जिस तरीके से चुपचाप 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 रहते हुए उन्होंने अध्ययन किया बिना किसी प्रचार के बिना किसी विज्ञापन के बिना किसी शोर शराबे के जिस तरह से उन्होंने संस्कृत की और भारतीय विद्याओं की सेवा की और जब उन्होंने किताब लिखी दो किताबें उनकी पूरी दुनिया में जाने की एक किताबें जाने की लेकिन दो किताबें मुख्य रूप से तो मैं समझता हूं कि वो एक संत थे और ऐसे संत से जो शिक्षा में भी हो जो समाज से भी, भी हो जो हम सब के लिए प्रेरणा का कारण भी हो मैं फिर से उनकी स्मृति में अपनी श्रद्धांजलि अर्पित करता हूं असम से मेरा रिश्ता नया नहीं है हमारे मुख्यमंत्री जी उसे जानते हैं और जानते हुए कह रहे थे कि कैलाश जी को असम के बारे में समझ है यहाँ की समस्याओं के बारे में भी थोड़ी बहुत जानकारी है तीन साल पहले हम लोगों ने यहाँ करीब 300 किलोमीटर की यात्रा की थी पद यात्रा की थी और बहुत दूर दराज के इलाकों में हम लोग गए उस पद यात्रा की शुरुआत की भारत के सर्वोच्च न्यायालय के मुख्य न्यायाधीश जी ने और उसके बाद फिर हम लोग बहुत से गांव में और दूर दराज के इलाकों में जंगली पहाड़ी इलाकों में गए कहीं कहीं तो भारत का कर्फ्यू होता था लेकिन कर्फ्यू से पहले हम लोगों ने अपनी बात रखी गांव के लोगों के बीच में और उस यात्रा का मकसद था लोगों में बच्चों की जो तस्करी हो रही है असम से और बाकी से दूसरे इलाकों में और बच्चों से जो बाल मजदूरी कराई जा रही है उसके खिलाफ जागृति पैदा करें और उसका असर हुआ यात्रा के दौरान भी बहुत लोगों ने हमारे पास शिकायतें की लेकिन इसके बाद हमारे पास न केवल शिकायतों का अंबार लग गया बल्कि अक्सर जब मैं अपने कार्यालय में जाता हूं अभी भी जब मैं दिल्ली में होता हूं तो एक दो तीन चार ऐसी माए और ऐसे पिता हमें मिल जाते हैं जिनके बच्चों को चुरा के बहला फुसला के दिल्ली में पंजाब में गुलाम बना के बेचा गया उनकी भगवान साहब का फायदा उठाकर बच्चों की इनोसेंस का फायदा उठाकर गरीबी का फायदा उठाकर जिस तरह से देश भर के दलाल असम में उड़ीसा में झारखंड में अरुणाचल में बिहार में पश्चिमी उत्तर प्रदेश में घूमते हैं पश्चिमी बंगाल में घूमते हैं 
और बच्चों को गुलाम बनाकर बेचते हैं वो हमारे लिए पूरे देश के लिए शर्मनाक बात है और आई एम सो हैप्पी हेयर टू सी नॉट ओनली द गैलेक्सी ऑफ इंटेलिजेंसी बट मोर इंपॉर्टेंटली दंग पीपल I am so inspired. I am so empowered. I am so motivated to see the young faces sitting in the lobby as well as in the balcony. You bring here power. You bring here energy. You bring here enthusiasm. You bring here hopes. You bring here determination. You bring here courage. You bring here possibilities. And my dear young friends. You bring here not only the future of Assam but the future of the whole nation. You bring here in this room. I congratulate you for that. When I am standing here, yesterday I arrived here and I just switch on my television in the evening, late in the evening, and I was watching. in iraq or syria iraq and syrian border a young boy maybe 8 9 year old has been given a gun in his hand and he was asked to kill some people he could not push the trigger he didn't know but he did find it some weeks ago many of you might have read in the newspapers that the young girls 8 9 10 year old girls in syria are sold to sexual slavery for a price less than a cigarette pack and if some of those girls cannot perform this slavery they are buried alive we live in a world where the boys are given guns in their hands and if they are not able to kill their own people they are buried alive more than 4000 doctors of yours and mine are made hostages by extremist groups in syria some parts of lebanon some parts of iraq just for sex slave they are sold in bits bogi lagai ja rahi hai unki hamari bechiyon ki and we are conquering we have already conquered mars sometimes when the girls were in school in nigeria 200 girls were kidnapped from a school you and i don't know where are they now are they alive or dead or killed or sold because these extremists know the power of education they wanted to create a terror they wanted to terrorize the entire country and entire society that girls should not attend the schools by group called boko haram when i came back after winning after receiving the nobel prize the country was celebrating i was in in my hometown in madhya pradesh though i live in in delhi for last 35 years but that day i went to visit my hometown vidisha and when the entire city and the neighborhood were on the streets suddenly i got a call that call was from a media person and she informed that about 500 students have been kidnapped and made hostages by some 
terrorist in a school in Peshawar. What is your reaction, he asked. I, I was shocked. I said, my spontaneous reaction was that I pray God. I pray that God will give them the truth. I wish that the God gives them some some good thought that they were also children sometime. And then I said that I, if they are not allowing those children to leave, if they are not freeing those children, I request them and I offer myself that you can kidnap me, you can kill me, I'm already 60 year old, but please leave my 500 children. All children are our children. Not only Indian children, not only Assamese children, not only African children, American children, Pakistani children, all children are our children. But if the childhood is under threat, if the education is under threat, if the lives of human beings are under threat, because of growing terrorism, growing fundamentalism and fanatism, how we can call ourselves cultured and civilized? Millions of children are victimized like that. Not only that, 168 million children across the globe are languishing in one or other form of child labor. You may simply say that they are poor children and that's why they are working. And my question is that globally 200 million bees crore adults are jobless. And many studies prove that these 20 crore jobless adults are none but the very parents of these children. Children are preferred in jobs because they are vulnerable physically and mentally. They cannot form the unions, they cannot go to the court of law, they cannot raise the voice against their exploitation, even sexual abuse. And above all, they are the cheapest source of labor, sometimes free labor. Parents remain jobless. Why children are in jobs then? 85 million of those 168 million are languishing in the worst forms of child labor including slavery, prostitution, forced to become child soldiers. They are the children who are trafficked. Sometimes when I sit with those girls whom I free, and my friends free from Odisha, Jharkhand, and Assam, Bihar simultaneously in a big group. And when they talk among themselves, you cannot hear it. You will feel pain and shame. A girl, a 12 year old girl stands up and asks, to another girls from another state and ask, by the way, my dear friend, can you tell how much money you were sold for? She said, maybe 6,000 rupees. Oh, the girl who questioned answers. I am more lucky that I have sold for 10,000 rupees. I am much more valuable. Then another girl stands up and says that, No, two of you were sold for 6,000 and 10,000. I was sold for 15,000 rupees. And then one of them stands up and asks to all, Do you know? 
how much money is a buffalo in your village is sold for? भैंस कितने पैसे में बिकती है तुम्हारे गांव? They look at each other and then try to answer that probably in two hundred thousand rupees, two lakh rupees. and then 